It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. I like to say hashtag sooner is safer because you cannot predict when that child is going to be exposed to pornography. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, the author of uh, six books about raising happy families and the founder of happyfamilies.com.au. Today, a very special guest. I'm really excited to be able to talk about something that that matters a great deal. In the next couple of weeks, we've got a summit called Bringing Up Boys coming up. And the topic we're going to discuss just now with Kristen Jensen from Defend Young Minds is a subject that affects well over 90% of our young men. Uh, Research suggests that it could be as much by the age of 15 as 99% of them uh, are involved with viewing whether intentionally or otherwise, explicit content online, pornography. And that's something that Kristen has got a lot to talk to us about right now. Kristen's the founder of Defend Young Minds and the best-selling author of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Porn Proofing Today's Young Kids, and also Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior, A Simple Plan to Protect Young Minds. Uh, Kristen is also a mum of three, grandma to two, and lives in the United States in Washington State, or, or is that pronounced Washington? How do you say that, Kristen? Because I've heard Wa- both. Washington. Uh, you're, a Washington. Washington. you're a Washington person? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, every now and again, I meet somebody who's from Washington, and I always, always smile when I hear that. It doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't read like there's an R there. So, Kristen, we've got a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for joining me on the uh, on the podcast. My first question is a confronting reality. I regularly hear from parents of kids as young as seven or eight, sometimes even younger, although usually it's around seven or eight who have found, uh, the, the kids that is, have found or they've been shown explicit content, pornographic content online. I don't use the term adult content. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's adult content. I don't think that it's appropriate to suggest that it's universally something that adults are seeking access to. So I prefer to call it explicit content or pornography. So these kids have been on the school bus and somebody's shown them this explicit content or they've been told to look something up online or they've had a big kid at a sleepover expose them to harmful content. What do you think is the basic message about this that every parent needs to understand and act on? Well, a couple of things. First of all, I say that every school bus in America and other places is a, you know, triple X rated movie theater, really. So that makes me shudder. I hear you say that and I know it's true, but I just think, no, this this is why I don't want my kids to catch the school bus. I know so many parents feel that way. (laughs) Well, they're going to see it sometime. It's a matter of being prepared, right? So they need to be prepared because none of us do very well when we're caught off guard. When children are prepared and understand what to do when they see pornography, then they have a real choice. Um, They have a better choice uh, to turn away. And when you educate them, um, then you have, then they really have a chance to make a good decision, you know, about bad pictures. So I would say, Parents, the message is parents need to prepare their children early because they will see it at some point. The second message is that kids, good kids get pulled into porn. I mean, it's not that they're bad kids and it has nothing to do with the fact that you're a wonderful parent either. It's out there. And um, so they need to learn defensive strategies against it. They need to learn to protect themselves because we can't completely protect them from it. We can do everything we can, filters and conversation, everything we should try all of that and do all of that because we have a duty of care actually to do all that, but we need to prepare them to defend themselves. So um, that's really uh, the point of my books and the curriculum that we've developed is to help children learn what to do when they see pornography. And and there's a lot of success stories they hear all the time. Uh, One of my favorites is uh, a mom read her nine-year-old son, good pictures, bad pictures. And he went to school and three days later on the playground, right? He was shown pornography by a, another student with a smartphone. And he he looked, he saw it, he recognized it. He 
He went home. He told his mom. And um, he said, I was scared, but I knew what to do. And you can just feel the burden coming off of his shoulders. I was scared, but I knew what to do. Sometimes porn is scary at the same time that it's very intriguing to these kids. So we also need to teach them that, you know, it's they're not a bad kid if they are interested. Uh, it's, it's just that it's bad for them. And um, so it's important for them to, to teach them early. So when do you encourage parents to start talking about bad pictures? Because you're saying start early and obviously have the conversation often. Um, how early? How often? So I would say it's not an exact age. It's whenever your child has any access to the internet. Because once they're on the internet, there are no iron gates. It's difficult uh, once they're out there. And kids, especially as they get a little older, they learn ways to get around uh, what we think might be barriers. And we also think that they wouldn't be interested until they get to be, you know, of an age where, they're going through puberty, but that's not true. Young kids can be very interested in this material, unfortunately. So I would say when I first started, I was writing a book for seven-year-olds, seven to 11. And I thought, I got people saying, seven, that's way too early. But then I had parents come up to me and say, hey, uh, do you have a book for preschoolers? And I just remember the first time a mom came up to me and asked me that. I felt like someone had, you know, punched me in the gut because what? Three-year-olds, but then I look around. You know, every three-year-old seems like they're on some kind of a tablet or a device. And so I wrote Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior because I had so many parents that they saw the need and they asked me to write it. So um, these are things that, you need to start early. The earlier you start it, the more comfortable it's going to be. I like to say hashtag sooner is safer because you cannot predict when that child is going to be exposed to pornography. You just can't. Most parents are surprised. In fact, there's a huge naivete gap. Uh, They've done studies on this recently, one done in the UK that showed that when they asked parents, you know, how many of you think that your kid has seen porn? Um, 25% of them said yes. Then they asked their own kids and it was 53%. That's a huge gap. Uh, More than double had actually seen porn. And when it came to girls, it was the gap was even bigger because parents don't think that their daughters are going to be interested or have a problem with it. But they do. And so we need to protect our daughters as well as our sons by having these conversations and teaching them from a young age. So I would say start by three or anytime they have access to any kind of device, whether it's in your home or in someone else's home. Uh, Talk us through a conversation. Uh, if, if you're going to bring this up with the kids, where do you start? How does this happen? And would you would you suggest that it should change as your child gets older? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything changes as they get older. Mm. So, yes. Yeah, so start out with just the basics. And in my Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior book, it's very simple, very gentle. Um, and it just teaches children to, one, recognize what a bad picture is, two, understand that it's harmful, and three, know what to do, have a plan. So they know what to do when they see it. So a definition, a warning, and a plan. And the definition just needs to be something very simple. Um, The one we use, uh, when I use in the book, is something like, you know, pornography or bad pictures or pictures of people with little or no clothing on that focus on the private parts of the body that we keep uh, covered with a swimsuit. Now that... Some people say, oh, that's too simple. That's just nudity. You know, we don't want to be body negative. We want to be body positive, all that stuff. Look, I get it. I'm body positive. I'm sex positive. But 
uh, you know, you really need to keep in mind that you're talking with a child and you have to keep it very simple. So start out with a simple definition and then talk about the, you know, why it's harmful. And we have a lot of that information in the books. And then third, give them a plan. So with the junior book, it's turn, run, and tell. And we give, you know, kids like little actions of what they can do to practice this. And then with the older kids, it's the can-do plan. And it really gives those kids the five steps they need to go through uh, to not only deal with pornography in the moment that they see it, but also what happens when those uh, memories keep popping back up in your mind. The brain is wired and and designed to remember shocking things. So it remembers the porn. Well, how do you how do you minimize that so it doesn't bother the child and so the child isn't tempted to, to go and look? So those things are all explained and it's important to have a plan in place. Uh, so again, a definition, a warning, and a plan. And you you asked also how should those conversations change over time? I'm speaking with Kristen Jensen. She's the author of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, and also the CEO of Defend Young Minds. Right after the break, we're going to find out why some parents are so dismissive of pornography or explicit content and how we can help them and also look at some of the research, uh, go a bit deeper into how porn can harm kids. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Imagine a home where discipline got results without anyone having to feel bad or in trouble. The Do's and Don'ts of Discipline is a webinar to help parents set limits with love, compassion and humanity. Find it now at happyfamilies.com.au slash shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers. Now, Kristen Jensen, uh, the author of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, joins me for a conversation about pornography. Kristen, a few years ago, I attended a conference called Porn Harms Kids. Uh, It seems that in the research arena, there are some people who will argue that pornography is not universally and always harmful for adults. It's a fairly touchy subject and there are some vested interests involved in that research. But one thing that I seem to be seeing across the entire research uh, arena is pretty well universal agreement that pornography does harm children. Can you tell me a little bit more about why this is the case, how it does? Sure. Well, um, pornography sexualizes children at a young, very young age. So it's premature. They're not ready Uh, to be sexualized. They're not ready to make these decisions or understand these things. Um, We see pornography leaking into and influencing pop culture. So kids want to look sexy when they're seven years old. I mean, so we see that that's a harm. It disrupts the normal childhood development. Again, children, we are not designed to be sexual until they're much older until their thinking brain has developed a little bit more and they can make better decisions. Um, And it warps their attitudes about sex. So where I would say most parents want their children to believe that sex is is a positive, loving thing that, that bonds people together, people that love each other, respect each other, trust each other. Um, you know, pornography teaches the exact opposite. It's self-centered. It's often violent. Uh, Pornography really gives them a toxic script about sex that really impacts their ability to have an intimate sexual relationship when they're older and when they're mature and when they're ready to do that. Um, And I have talked with so many people who have been pulled into porn and they really struggle with that. Um, We know through research that porn changes sexual behavior and it increases sexual violence in users. A lot of, you know, good studies coming out of Australia with that as well. And then porn use, use fuels child on child harmful sexual behavior. So it's hard when a child gets involved in pornography, but when that pornography leads them to do harmful things on other children, you've got a whole nother big problem. 
I recently heard a podcast where an 18-year-old described his exposure and interest in pornography that began when he was very young, way too young. Uh, His parents had done all of the stuff that you've talked about today. While they didn't necessarily have your book, they'd had regular conversations. They'd walked through the harms and the risks. They'd given him plans and they had the internet filters, all the right stuff. They did it all, but he still got caught up in it to the point where he was exploring explicit content up to seven to ten times per day, he disclosed on the podcast. It feels like there's a lot at stake. This is – I'm going to – I'm going to say this. I I believe it's going to affect all of his relationships throughout the rest of his life, particularly his intimate ones, as as he moves forward. What advice do you have for a parent who has discovered that their child is using pornography, particularly if they're using it intentionally and regularly, and they don't seem to be able to find a way through it? Yeah. Well, as you mentioned, as you said, I mean, the pull of porn is very strong, And for some people, it's very, very strong. Um, And so parents can do everything possible. And the child still has their agency, their ability to choose, right? And as a parent myself, I know there are things that I taught my kids. And they don't necessarily, they're struggling with some of those things. Still, so um, it happens. Um, I would say that some kids learn by instruction. Some kids learn by example. But some kids have to learn by their own sad experience. And so you are going to get these kids that you do all the right things and they still get pulled into it. First of all, we have a, a, a guide on Defend Young Minds which is my kids saw porn, now what? So it helps parents, if there's a smart plan, um, it helps parents respond, you know, and be prepared to respond to that so that they respond in a helpful way. But I think you have to accept that your child needs to want to quit porn. And it has to be for themselves and not just to please you as a parent. Um, But In the end, you have to realize that love is still the foundation of helping your child. Your relationship is ultimately more important, you know, in the long term, and it will help you help them. Because at some point, if you have a good and a strong and a loving relationship, despite the fact that they're not behaving the way you want them to behave, you will have that influence. You will have that ability to help. And don't make porn the wedge that comes between you and your child. Such that's a, just the best advice I can get. Yeah, <laughs> so, such, a, such a valuable and important conversation. Kristen Jensen from Defend Young Minds. If people want more info, where should they go? What can they find? Yeah, well, they can find us on Instagram. They can find us on Facebook. And they can go to our website, uh, defendyoungminds.com. We have a free guide that they can download instantly. um, And it's how to talk to kids about pornography, a quick start guide that gets you up and running about this topic and some statistics. and, And then we have other guides that are very helpful as well. So check us out at defendyoungminds.com. And um, also check out our brain defense Uh, We have a new curriculum for kids ages 8 to 12, and it's video-based. It's really fun and actually entertaining. And so it's um, Brain Defense Digital Safety. So check that out as well on our website. And Kristen, you've been kind enough to share five copies of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures with us, plus five copies of the junior version as well. Our Facebook page has all the details on how uh, anyone can win those books. So jump over there right away for the the details about that. Uh, Every... every Every month on the first Sunday of the month, my family sits down and we have a conversation about topics like pornography or intimacy or these big, heavy topics. We make it a point. We make it a date. It's an every first Sunday of the month thing. And this is a book that we are going to be discussing in our next first Sunday discussion. I can't wait to read it to my kids. So grateful for the conversation. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you so much. And uh, to all of your listeners, make sure they know that they can get good pictures, bad pictures on Amazon in Australia. 
Perfect. Thank you so much to Kristen Jensen from Defend Young Minds. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon. From Bridge Media, Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And for all the info you need, you can check out the show notes for the links or visit happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.